What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bastin. Today we are talking bank and shore fishing. Now you boaters, before you uh, click out of this video, before you exit out, uh, stick around, because you, uh, you might learn something, maybe figure out some different angles, different ways to approach things, but to stick around and uh, hopefully you guys learn something. But uh, you guys have been asking for a long time for us to continue to do more shore fishing videos, more bank fishing videos. And I actually love it. It's how I grew up fishing, you know, as a kid, going to the lakes, going to the ponds, walking the shorelines, and catching bass. So today, went out for a few hours, caught a few bass, and I'm just gonna kind of walk you through the gear I used, the rods I used, the baits I used, and some of my thoughts. So, you shore fishermen, you know, sometimes throughout the year, you probably feel like you wish you had a boat or you wish you could get out on the lake. Well, this time of year, springtime, the fish are coming to you. It is your time to shine. You guys have so many advantages, advantages over guys with big boats, with big bass boats. Um, just to name a few real quickly, you're a lot more quiet. You can sneak up on the fish. You can get to places, backs of coves, backs of creeks, get, get to places that guys in big boats can't get, right? And another key thing is angles. You get to approach those fish with lures they may or may not have seen, but from different casting angles. So different angles that those fish haven't seen. Real it is, guys, it is, it's a good time to hoof it, to walk the bank and stick some giants. Now today, out of Mother Nature threw a curveball. Um, you know, you'll see some of the chesty footage. I was out walking the bank, catching some fish, not Clear Lake, I was actually at Berryessa, but um, started to rain on me. So I couldn't actually do this video there to kind of wrap up the day. But uh, anyways, so we've got back home in my backyard and uh, let's go through some of the gear. Now, hopefully we can do several of these videos, kind of like a, a shore fishing series. Uh, so if you guys like this type of video, down below in the video, down below in the comment section, uh, let us know and uh, we'll try and make it happen for you guys. So right off the bat, one thing you absolutely need bank fishing is a good fishing backpack. This is the backpack I've had now for, I wanna say two, two and a half years, and I absolutely love it. It's been through the ringer. It's been into several different states. Anytime that I go and fish or film out of Matt's boat, I just throw most of my gear in this and go. So it's not only when I'm fishing from the shore, it's just anytime I'm traveling with fishing stuff, it'll hold like, I don't know, two and a half, uh, 3,700 boxes. The reason I say half is because, let's go ahead and open this for you. You could probably smash three full size 37s, hundreds in here, but I like to, have one of the little Bass Mafia boxes for all my terminal tackle. And then I'll have one 3,700 box with all of my finesse stuff, my worms, my hooks, uh, Ned rigs, Senkos, brush hogs, swim bait heads, all that type of stuff in there. And then my other box will be all of my reaction stuff, my little glide baits, my top waters, rip baits, uh, blade baits, lipless cranks. Uh, so. That's why I say two and a half. You can fit quite a bit of stuff in here. Um, inside, it's got uh, some good hook. I don't even know what you want to call it. It's real thick stuff, so hook won't hook, hooks won't penetrate it. But uh, I'm not trying to do an infomercial here. Just want to show you guys real quick the importance of having a good backpack. And then right here in this section, I have all of my plastics, all of my spare uh, scale all that stuff. So you guys, first thing you need to do is get a good backpack. Um, there's, a, there's a few of them on the market, but like I said, I've, I've had this one now for probably two and a half years and it's lasted, it's been through the ringer and uh, still holding up. So today I uh, had a little bit of a challenge. The weather's kind of like I said, it's thrown its curveball. It was, I don't know, 80 degrees yesterday and now it's gonna rain or snow or something, it's like 55 degrees. So it, I don't know why this usually happens when I decide to go uh, shore fishing, but if you guys remember last year, the same thing happened. But uh, 
I started walking the bank, and like I said, there's so many benefits to walking the bank this time of the year. The fish are, it's springtime. The fish are coming to you. They're coming to the secondary points, the main lake points, the backs of coves. So you, as a shore fisherman, walk those shores. Do some research. You know, figure out the lake that you're fishing. Do some Google Earth stuff. Figure out, um, figure out first off, where you can fish. What's off limits? What's private property? You don't want to do trespassing, anything like that. But do some research. Figure out what's the cheapest place to park. Where where has the closest access to the the parts of the body of water that you want to fish? Makes no sense to park five miles away to the area that you want to fish, right? So, so do some research at home and learn your lake. Again, Google Earth, find those points, find those secondary points, find those spawning coves where you're going to have the best percentage, the best shot at sticking a big one. Now, bank fishing is all about simplifying everything, right? You can only take what you can carry on your back and what's in your hands, right? So you don't want to take 10 rods. You don't want to take 100 pounds of gear. You're just not going to have fun. And one thing that I actually learned today, uh, I actually brought three rods today. And you could definitely do it. But the main rod that I wanted to throw was a glide bait. Now. When you have a backpack on your back and two other rods in your hand, it's pretty hard to cover shoreline and make casts with a reactive bait. So my tip for you, if this is the type of fishing you wanna do, whether it be big swim bait fishing or just reaction fishing in general, take one rod, maybe two, but your best bet is one because now you can walk the bank, you can cast, Retrieve, cast, just keep walking and going. It's really a pain in the butt. Today, I brought a spinning rod and I brought a all-purpose rod. This rod started off with a jig. Um, I put, what else did I put on it? I put a top water on it and a weightless Senko. So that was kind of my all-purpose uh, rod. But I had the biggest followers on this and I, I knew that this was going to draw the biggest bites. Uh, didn't stick any today, but uh, that was the style I wanted to fish today. And having those two other rods just really got in the way. It, it was a, a hindrance. So my thought process with the three rods, um, when you're in the backs of these cuts, right, there's, depending on the lake that you're fishing, are you fishing a point that goes off to deep water with rock? Are you fishing a shallow flat with grass? Now, the reason that I'm talking about this video in spring, this is a spring shore fishing video because the water is going to be different in the summertime or fall time. The grass is going to be higher. Um, you're going to be farther away from shore. It'd be harder to get the fish in. So the baits and stuff I talk about today won't necessarily apply to a summer or fall fishing video. So that is why this is spring shore fishing. So my thought process, like I was fishing, had some points, had some secondary points that had went off to rock piles, had some, some breaks. And that type of fishing, I want a bait, a presentation that has an open hook. You know, this the lake I was fishing today, Barry S, that has spots, small mouth, and large mouth. And it's a great, a great fishery, it really is. So I, I wanted to be able to fish a bait like this out off of those secondary points, those main lake points. And when the fish pick it up, you have a lot better uh, hookup ratio. You get a hook into them quicker with an exposed hook versus a Texas rig or a hook where it's buried back into the bait. So I wanted, I wanted the finesse rod. This rod right here, like I said, it had a jig on it. Um, when you're walking into the backs of the, some of these coves, now the lake I was at today, the water's up, so you have flooded bushes, you have flooded trees, flooded willow trees, and the fish are moving all the way to the back. So they're right up in the middle of that stuff. So I wanted a rod that I could, this has 15 pound fluoro on it. I wanted a rod that I could, if I saw a big one in a tree or something, I could flip a weightless worm in or some type of bait. When I stuck her, I'd be able to get her out. So that's why I bought, brought this all around purpose rod, all around purpose, 
all-purpose rod. This is a 610 medium. If you're gonna go with one rod that kind of does it all, go with like a 610 to a 73 medium to medium heavy. You could throw heavier jigs on it. You can throw top waters. You can throw spinner baits, chatter baits, uh, glide baits, smaller glide baits. If you're only gonna bring one rod, that's what you're gonna wanna throw. This is a little shorter than, you know, it's a 610, it's a little on the short side, but it's really cool uh, in tight quarters to be able to flip and pitch uh, around that flooded, that uh, submerged stuff. So that's why I went with this rod right here. Um, and then my last rod that I brought was the Dobbins 734. This is the Fury. Um, one thing I wanna talk about guys is, um, price points on these rods. You know, this is a $100 rod. This is the Canaan. I think that's like an $80 reel. You don't need super high-end equipment to go hoof the trail and uh, hike through grass, hike through bushes, all that stuff to shore fish. You know, these rods get them done. Uh, the, the most expensive rod I did bring today was this X-Pride. This rod is a sick rod. It's the 610 medium light. I just got that in and I really wanted to try it and I paired it up with the new Daiwa Tatula. Uh, you guys have been asking for a review on this reel, so I wanted to put it to use uh, before, before I, I did the review. So uh, short answer to that, this, this reel's sick. It's, I really like it. So where I was fishing today, I was fishing uh, secondary points. That's what I was looking for. I was looking for stuff that had rock on it something that the, the smallmouth and the spots could, could spawn on. Make sure when you guys are, are fishing in the springtime, always wear polarized glasses and uh, look out for snakes. I did see a couple snakes today, so be careful on that. But always wear polarized glasses, lets you see into the water better. You can see where the fish are positioning, where they're staging, where they've made their beds. I didn't do great today. Um, I did see two giants. I had uh, two fish follow the glide bait. It was off of a main lake point. I fired out to a, a tree branch that I saw out in the water. Didn't see the fish, but I fired the glide bait, the SVA were 168 out across it. And then just two subs just came up and they actually followed it all the way to shore. Um, didn't commit, but they showed me where they were at. So if I go back now, I can, I can uh, give another shot with the glide bait or finesse bait. But uh, small one was probably six to seven. Big one was nine to 11. Uh, she, was, she was big, but that's how it goes sometimes with these glide baits. You know, you're one twitch away from, from having the fish of a lifetime and the complete opposite. You're one twitch away from doing the wrong twitch or giving the bait too much action and the fish just don't, don't trigger. So that's how it went today, but uh, still love this bait, you know, the, 168, you guys have heard us rave about it for years. Uh, big fish, eat it. But caught some fish, I caught some smallmouth. I caught one smallmouth, little guy, I don't know, 10 or 12 inches, not very big. Uh, he was actually, I think he was on a bed. Couldn't really tell, it was kind of windy. But uh, had a great day to get out, get some exercise, burn some calories, and uh, try fishing without the big boat. You know, like I said, you guys, you shore fishermen, you bank fishermen, this is your time to shine. The fish are coming to you. Um, you really do have a great opportunity to stick your PB, to stick a fish of a lifetime, because these fish are coming in shallow. You know, the winter time, fall, those fish are feeding up and they're gonna move out deep and uh, they're gonna pull away from you guys. So get off the TV, get off the couch and just go walk, guys. Learn the lake, learn your fisheries and uh, go out and have fun. The, the weather's typically nice, right? typically nice in the springtime. And uh, you can learn a lot about fish mannerisms. Uh, you can sit there and, and play with fish when you're watching them, see how they react to certain baits, see how they react to more action versus less action. You know, there's a lot that can be learned when you can see your bait and see the fish reacting to whatever you're doing with the rod. So a uh, little tip for you there. But uh, what else? So talked about gear, talked about rods. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it, guys. Um, the biggest key is to cover, you know, cover water, cover distance of shoreline, and figure out where these fish are coming in. Some coves will be good, some won't. Some points will be good, some won't. But 
one, I keep talking about advantages, another advantage that you have, right? You're not in a big boat, you're not making noise, and you can make multiple casts to the same location. I'm guilty of it. I'm sure a lot of guys in big boats, bass boats are too, you know, halfway through the stop when we're fishing, we're thinking about next stop we're going to make, where we're going to go, what bait we're going to throw. We're not giving the first location, the actual location where we're at, the uh, time of day that it needs, right? That's why kayak fishermen, float tube fishermen, shore fishermen, they really are good. They learn how to pick the area apart, how to dissect it and figure out that area. So make sure you guys slow down. Pick that cove that you're fishing apart. Pick that point that you're fishing apart. Learn where the little rock piles are, the little humps, those sort of things. Don't just bl uh, burn bank, if you will. Don't just run bank and, uh, and cover water, unless that's what you want to do. Uh, maybe you're looking for sight fish, or maybe you're throwing a big glide bait, and that's all you want to do, then tear it up. But if you guys are finesse fishing, or if you guys are trying to fish cover structure, stuff like that, slow down and uh, really dissect it guys. So the baits that I use today primarily, I use the, uh, the six inch Robo Worm. This is on the new, I really like this hook. You guys need to check this out. This is owner's new uh, knocker head, I believe it's what I, I, I'll link it down below, just like every video, down below the video description, we'll link everything, but this is their new Ned Rig head and uh, comes in really lightweight and super stout hooks. So you don't have to worry about bending them out. But I fished that. I did throw a the same worm on a Texas rig drop shot, a weedless drop shot, and uh, caught a couple fish on that. I threw the S waiver, the 168, in light trout, and a little uh, a little finesse jig with a Strike King baby menace on it, and the spook. Those are pretty much the baits that I threw today. I did throw the Ned Rig a little bit. Um, I went with the Robo Worm. They have a new color, what's it called? Um, Watermelon Dawn, which I really like. It kind of, it's kind of like that old ugly-ish color, that do nothing iridescent green. Um, but those were, my, those were my primary baits today. So uh, just like every video, down below in the video description, I'll link everything that I used or talked about. That's it guys, it was a lot of fun to get out there and, uh, and exercise, burn some calories and enjoy the the scenery the lake the eagles flying around you know the weather obviously through a little bit of a curveball but uh, that's fishing you know it's not always about catching it's more the, the overall experience so if you guys like this video hit the like button remember to subscribe to our channel um we're doing three videos a week we're growing faster than we ever have and it's because of you guys matt and i we can't say thank you enough we appreciate it we will continue to bring these videos to you uh, as long as you guys request them. If you guys have any requests, you guys want more shore fi fishing videos, maybe uh, top three or four baits or rods or something like that, we can do that. Um, but shore fishing, man, you, you shore fishing guys, uh, you guys are good at it. You stick big ones. And uh, I have a lot of respect for you guys. So uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and we'll talk to you soon, guys. We appreciate you. Have a good day.